Hello everyone, my name is Ryan Bruce, my friends call me Fluff, and today on Rifts, Beards, and Gear, we check out the Laney Black Country Customs Ironheart Ampsim plugin from Aurora DSP. I think a lot of folks were first introduced to the Laney Ironheart amplifier, I'm talking about the real one in real life here, uh, through kill switch engage and their use of the Ironheart both in the studio and live. And they were certainly the first time I ever heard one in person. And I absolutely loved the tone that they got from them. I know Joel and Adam really liked the, the amps and they used them for a while. And I would periodically poke Joel about uh, all sorts of questions I had with the amplifier because it has an interesting tone control as well as a dynamics, which we will dive into here on the plugin. However, I think it's a really unique amp and therefore a really unique amp sim from Aurora DSP. Now, before we go any further, this is a sponsored video. Aurora DSP and Laney asked me to show you guys this amp sim. All thoughts and opinions are still mine. So I know what you're thinking. Do we need another amp sim plugin? In my opinion, there's always room for the best, right? There's always room for really good ones or something, you know, an amp sim that offers something that other amp sims don't necessarily offer. And I know I just mentioned the dynamics and the wattage control and the tone control on this amplifier. However, this is just much more than just a straight up copy of a really cool British made amplifier. There's more going on. We're gonna dive into it. Let me break down the individual sections that are in the plugin. So first we have a stop section and in the stop section, there's only two pedals. We have the BCC monolith and the BCC steel park distortion, overdrive distortion, depending on the flavor and the things that you want to do with your particular setup, you can utilize either one or both at the same time. If you want to get super crazy, I find th these to be pretty versatile, really, really hot output wise. I mean, as an example, I only use the overdrive about halfway up on the volume as opposed to normally all the way up on most Sims, really versatile, really cool sounding. Both of these pedals add cut and clarity. Now next is the actual amp sim. The amp sim you're going to feel right at home if you know anything about these amplifiers. And even if you don't, I find the layout of this amplifier very, very intuitive. My favorite part is the pre-boost, which we will get to in just a second. However, there are more powerful controls, including, like I said, the dynamics, the tone control, reverb, and wattage. Now next we have the cab section. Now the cab section features two 412 cabinets. The first cab is an LA412, which features a Celestion G12H speakers. I'm a huge fan of these speakers. And then the other cabinet is a Laney GS412 featuring Laney's own speakers. You can blend or use one or the other if you'd like in the cab section, as well as load your own third-party impulses, which we will get to later in the playthrough section. However, just know that you have many flavors and many microphones to choose from to sculpt your sound. And lastly, we have the effects rack. Now the effects rack has an API style uh, EQ, which I am a huge fan of. We also have a limiter, a delay, and a reverb, and they can all be in stereo operation or not. So if you wanna get the nice and wides, you can, go, you can go and do that as well. However, I like the layout of this particular section because it just reminds me of like my 500 series rack. It's just easy to navigate, I like it. All right, so I have the Laney Ironheart plugin from Aurora DSP. I'm gonna take you through the plugin. I have my stock tone, my bass tone that I usually start with. This is my default tone. I'm really going for a straight up the middle uh, very aggressive, just basically a metal tone or a hard rock tone, um, depending on the guitar that I'm using. So from left to right, we have the stomp section feeling, featuring, 
excuse me, the Steel Park uh, Overdrive and the Monolith Distortion. Now, I like to use these depending on what I'm going for. And I won't typically use a full-on distortion pedal with an amp sim like this because, again, this is not about gain. This is about clarity. And we'll get to a section of the amp in just a second. However, the monolith is something that I would use for lower output guitars. And the Steel Park, I find, adds clarity to an already distorted guitar. You'd use this as you would use a you know TS-808 or something like that. But notice I have the volume at five and a half. I don't have it full up. I just I just liked how it felt and how it sounded. Also, bass and treble, I'm not adding anything. I have these all the way down. But these are basically the drive pedals that are in front of the amp. In the amp section, I have some some volume. I have some gain. The gain's at four. However, notice I have a pre-boost going at 0.1. This is just a smidgen of pre-boost because I like what it does with the top end. Um, we'll come back to this in just a second. However, notice the dynamics are all the way up. The tone is in the middle, no reverb. And then in the cab section, I am using uh, the LA-412 uh, for both sides. So I can, if I want, split this to the GS. The GS is cool. Um, just not really what I was going for for this particular tone. I have an SM57 off axis and then I have a Royer 121. Again, we'll come back to this cab section. And then for the effects, I have a little bit of EQ dip in the uh, mid range at 500. So if I turn this on and off, check out the difference. <laughs> adding a lot of clarity. It's actually doing quite a bit with that EQ. And then I just have a limiter just to level things off when I palm mute. And then of course I have the noise gate engaged. So let's go back to the amp. We have a rhythm section, which can be clean can be distorted. Obviously I have it distorted, but let's go clean. Now these EQ settings are not dialed for the clean tone. It's dialed for the rhythm tone. So, if I was dialing this for the clean tone, I would have not as much trouble. Also, I would have this pre-boost off. Let's go ahead and turn this off. It's almost acting like a secondary overdrive pedal, which is key for punching in this rhythm tone. So, back to this pre-boost. Turn it off. Makes a huge difference. I'm not doing this for gain. I'm doing it for that upper mid thing. Now, if we go back to the stop section, let's take it one step further backwards and let's turn off the overdrive. could almost not use the overdrive almost I just I just kind of like how it sounds now we have the lead section so if we went into the lead I could obviously dial this with a little high gainier thing and maybe I'd want to go to the effects and maybe I want to add some delay. Mm -hmm. 
Pretty cool. It's a great sounding delay. We'll get to more of that in just a second. However, let's go back to the amp. Let's go back to the rhythm section. Let me, I'm gonna turn off the overdrive. Let's play with the dynamics. Now the dynamics and the tone control is very, very powerful and don't do what I did when I first fired this thing up and I chose some random preset, I was like, this doesn't sound right, what's going on here? The dynamics and tone were set for like a strat, right? So the tone is a tone control. This is very, very powerful and very sensitive. Be careful with this, but I'm gonna play with it just to show you what it can do. Now, this is useful for doing real broad strokes tonally. And if I had, you know, let's say I'm turning more counterclockwise, I'm turning this down, so I am taking off top end. But let's say I like that low end and I do wanna add more top end, so this is when I would add more treble on the actual channel. Now I could take this a step further and I could move some mics around to get more top end. Let's go ahead and try it. You can hear how the top end is different than what it was. I'm still getting the top end, but still it's totally different. We're in a totally different ballpark tonally which can be really cool. So let's put this back. Let's put this back to five. Now the dynamics is just that. I'm gonna turn down that treble. This is kind of compressing. It's getting rid of the low end. Now maybe I can use the tone, just the tone control to kind of dial in that, uh, that low end. Really, really interesting tonal balance here. Now if I want full dynamics, which I do, I would put this full up. And that way I'm getting all of my low end, but if I want to tighten it up, I can turn this down just a smidge and tighten up that low end. Now, as far as the wattage goes, obviously this is a, an amp sim and not a real amp. However, the amp is going to respond quite differently depending on the wattage that you have dialed in. Also the volume. I liked it at nine for some reason on my preset. Your mileage may vary. Let's move into the cab section. Now the cab section is pretty intuitive. I can adjust the angle of the microphone. So for example, I can do like a Fredman-esque technique and I can come over here and do an SM57 and leave the angle at zero and leave this at 45 and blend them. can change the cabinet if I want. I tend to lean towards the LA-412. Also notice I have a lot of air coming in, so let's turn this off. This is gonna be a top-end shimmer. And 
finally I have the blend here at the bottom. Right now I have a 50-50, but I can blend in between the two speakers. <laughs> Now also included amongst all of these bells and whistles is the IRDX technology from Bogren. I'm not a huge fan of what it's doing for this particular tone, so I have it left to zero. However, depending on your setup and what you're going for, you may find that useful. And at the bottom of each side of the cabinet, you have a third party impulse loader and boom, we have, we have all of my impulses that I could load and utilize within the cab section. Pretty cool. You guys saw the effects. We have reverb delay, a limiter and the EQ. I am a huge fan of the the quality of effects. I like the fact that the reverb actually sounds like a, an actual reverb. And then with the delay, like you heard earlier, we can go between digital, slap, and analog. Analog's pretty dirty. Turn that back off. And that is the Laney Ironheart Amp Sim plugin from Aurora DSP. So what do I think? I mean, honestly, the introductory price for this thing is 50 bucks and that's crazy aurora dsp has a good grasp on what makes something sound good but also feel good in my opinion we've had their stuff on here before however the lenny ironheart is is pretty cool because you don't necessarily see that in other platforms digital or otherwise you don't see these and you, know, you don't see the model in like a fractal axe effects or you know a line six helix or anything like that it's kind of on its own tonal island, in my opinion. And I really like the features that it has in order to let you kind of emphasize the low end, emphasize the high end with the tone control like we did in the playthrough. Super cool. And honestly, not crazy expensive either. You're getting a lot of bang for your buck. And I like the fact that it has just all the tonal options you could possibly want and much, much more. I will link down below in the description, if you would like to know more information on all things Laney Black Country Customs Ironheart Ampsim for more DSP and while you're down there, consider subscribing to support the channel. And with that, you've been wonderful. I've been Fluff. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.